Before we get into this video, I want to announce something super exciting. After months and months of work, I finally launched my second Skillshare class, Creating Compelling Case Studies. This is one you guys have been asking for for a really long time, and it's taken me so long because I really wanted to make it great. Feel free to watch the trailer and sign up for a free trial with the link in my description box below, and I really hope you guys love it. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Maddie, if you're new, I'm a product designer currently working in food tech, and here on YouTube I make videos about design, productivity, and life as a designer. Today, I wanna to help you figure out what to include in your UX case studies. So we're gonna talk about my top must-haves and nice-to-haves. But first, let's take a step back and talk about what a case study even is in the realm of design, because it's a fairly new term in the industry. A case study is an in-depth, detailed examination of a particular case or cases within real-world context. And in design, when we say case, we specifically mean project or problem. Case studies are different from other portfolio projects because they go deeper. They take their reader through observations and learnings as opposed to just final deliverables and visuals. There's nothing wrong with just showing imagery, especially for a more visual type of designer and project, but many UX product and marketing portfolios use the case study format because it shows the viewer the how and why behind your work and it often highlights results which is really important to more business focused individuals. In the Skillshare class I mentioned before I go into tons and tons of detail and show many examples about how to plan, outline, write, design, and publish your UX case studies but for this video, let's focus on the must-haves and the nice-to-haves. The first must-have is a problem or opportunity statement. Basically, what are the goals of the project? What would success look like? Next is your role and who you worked with, not the people specifically, but their roles so that people viewing your case study understand what your expertise is and how you're able to work with cross-functional partners. Next, your case study should answer the why behind your design decisions. What drove your design direction and prioritization? Usually this is in the form of some type of research, whether formal or informal. Number four, some degree of process work. What are the actual things you did and why? Make sure you don't just define different UX exercises like empathy mapping and card sorting. People looking at your portfolio don't care about the definitions of these things. They care about why you chose to spend your time and resources on those specific exercises and what you learned from them. Number five, of course, visuals of your final deliverables. People looking at your portfolio want to know that you've actually got those design skills and that what comes out at the end looks really good and polished and reflects everything that you learned along the way. And lastly, include some type of results or success metrics. What difference did this project make? Prove that your work was worth all of the time and resources that went into it. Now let's move into the nice to haves. These are things that would definitely make your case study more compelling if they actually fit into the narrative of how your project went. Feel free to leave any of these out if they're not relevant or if they would not actually add anything to the story of your project. Number one, more details about any research you did. A summary of your findings, actual data, quotes from research participants. Number two, a visual system or brand guidelines. Maybe you did some design system work that is relevant to the story, but if not, feel free to leave this out. Number three, more process artifacts such as empathy maps, site maps, user personas, or user flows. Number four is huge, and I do recommend doing this if you have time and if it makes sense for your project, and that's mockups that are either moving or interactive in order to highlight really specific flows or features. Number five, you could talk about your future roadmap. Did your project bring up any initiatives that you'll need to tackle next, or priorities that didn't make it into this phase of work that you'll want to tackle in the next phase? And lastly, 
lastly, you could include some challenges that you faced and how you overcame them and maybe what you learned about yourself as a designer throughout this project. If you want to dig in deeper to the topic of case studies, I highly recommend checking out my new Skillshare class. You'll learn how to craft a compelling case study from start to finish. You'll see tons and tons of resources, examples, personal anecdotes and tips from myself, common mistakes that people make with their case studies. And in the discussion section, you'll be able to actually add your work in progress and ask me questions. I'm on Skillshare almost every single day, answering questions and looking at projects. So I really hope to see you in there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.